I've used cast iron pans my whole life, both in and out of professional kitchens, and it turns out, I don't know how they're made. We are here to meet Alyssa, who's gonna show me, start to finish, how to make a cast iron pan. So we're in front of the furnace. I noticed there's a few different things going into the furnace. What different compounds are going in there to give us our molten iron? So it's not just iron, it's a combination of railroad tie steel, um, castings that are shaken out from earlier production, and then some pig iron. And you were saying it takes 11 minutes for yeah. a thousand pounds to turn into molten. Yeah, it takes me longer to make coffee, I mean, it's crazy. It's the center of the earth, right there, in 11 minutes. Our skillets are a little different. Ohio! <laughs> this is really exciting to me because I am so Midwestern from Ohio, yeah, Cleveland. Girl. And now it's Ohio <laughs> that I get to take with me. Yeah, Cleveland right is right, right there. <laughs> We're in the core room right now, which is where all the processes start for sand mold making. This is a sand mixer basically that throws down 50 pounds of sand a minute. Oh, wow. It's taking the shape of that mold, that pattern, and you want it to be really accurate so that the metal grabs as much detail as possible. Okay. And this is one half of the mold that we're gonna make. There's always a top and a bottom. It takes about two minutes for it to harden up and it'll feel just like a sugar cube. Two minutes? Yeah. Wow. It's super fast. The finger is up. so much heavier. So we're gonna just find that seam line until you see it kind of open up. There you go. Yeah, girl. You see that? So we're getting it ready <laughs> to then pour. Yep. I'm gonna just cut this this well. One, two, three. Beautiful. This is your baby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. So what did I just do? <laughs> so you you cut in into the into the part a little bit more, not a big deal at all, because it'll just fill with metal, and you'll see when it comes out, you'll have a little notch there. You might want to keep it, it might be your mark. Of course I'll want to keep yeah. it. This is our mold line. So you're just really making sure this is well lubricated. Yeah, so we're going in and brushing in the rest of the mold wash. Cast iron cookware is always been a part of a lifestyle. It's like the one cookware that people will use over and over and over again and pass down like furniture. Absolutely. You know? All right, and this is our cup. The metal will like hit this first. So every oh, wait, single wrong. thing we've done up until this point is to not have the liquid metal flooding in. Right. We're ready to pour. Oh God. We're ready to pour. We're at that point. <laughs> you look legit though, dude. Thanks. I am legit so as as really as, nervous. So as you come down, it's gonna be a little bit heavier. You're only going to have about 125 to 150 pounds of metal. In only 150. Uh, and it's important to know that you're, you don't want to stop and start and stop and start. You want to have a really consistent pour. Have it go just like you're transferring OJ from like one craft to another. You're at the perfect height. So just go ahead and just slowly tip it and seal it out. There it is. Go all the way to the top. You are a natural. Holy <laughs> All right, let's move it over. <laughs> Woo! This one's hot. All right. So this is your Ohio skillet, and you're up. Beautiful. Woo! Woo! My entire body is like tensed up right now. Everything's been poured. It's been about an hour and a half. We're ready for shakeout, which means that we're gonna open up the molds. We're gonna see what we got. Give it a good. There you go. Going with it. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my gosh! It's Ohio. <laughs> So where do we go from here? So now we're gonna go back to Madison and start on some finished work. This is the most amount of power <laughs> tools I've used in one day ever. <laughs> Iron is pretty soft, actually, right. and so it cuts really nice, like like butter. But you could just wiggle it off with your hand. Big old thing right here. Remember when we were cutting in that gate? Yes. And I was like, I did that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This might be like an original Katie Pickens. <laughs> it's looking good. All right, I think we're ready for the Dremel. This so. is really unbelievable, by the way, how much work, especially finishing work, goes into a pan. Beautiful. Awesome. 
Next step is preheat and then seasoning. And you're heating beyond the smoke point of oil. Yeah, what we're doing okay. is... Uh, so that's why it's gonna get... Smoky in right. here, yeah. We're just trying to drive out any last remaining water, alcohol, anything else. We want it bone dry. You can't go too thick on the first layer because we're gonna dry brush it anyway. That's why vintage cookware is so revered because over time it's had so many, so many layers. So this is kind of like, you know, when the pan is in use and you're seasoning it in between uses, you're not ever dumping a bunch of oil in. You're kind no. of lightly coating it and then yeah. wiping it off. Right. So Absolutely. now we wait half an hour. We wait a half an hour and then we start this uh, two, two more times. Start of its lifetime of use, and it only gets better over time. So we get it to a point that's shelf stable, and as they use it over time, it just gets more and more. That is the beauty best. of cast iron. It's it's interesting because I kind of know not to wash it with soap and water and right. keep it seasoned and clean, and the benefits you know. <laughs> far outweigh any intimidation. Yeah, with using cast iron. This is cool. this is really really special. Good job, you made your first skillet. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like to see more, click here. We're about to bring out some sea urchin. How did these get here? We got one boat coming from Santa Barbara Island, which is a small island.